Welcome back to the line. Last week, our opinion panelists debated the case of Andrew Romero. He is accused of killing Rio Rancho police officer Greg Benner. Attorney General Hector Baldaris pledged this week to look into the Romero case and issues in the justice system here in our state. And tell me, start with you. Mr. Balderas is bringing 12 agencies together in Española for a violent crimes review team. And it, it, it seems really, from the outside reading it, very vigorous what he's trying to get at here. He's not shirking away from this at all. It, it, he was basically look at the camera and say, look, we're number two in violent crimes here by states here in the country. We need to do something here. How, how impactful can the AG be in that office on filtering down to these other agencies? Well, he is the state's chief law enforcement mm -hmm. officer. So, you know, from that perspective, he has a, he has a pulpit of which mm -hmm. that he can use to, uh, you know, call different committees and take action. Um, I think it all comes down to how that affects right. state law, local law, and how local entities kind of work. I have to say that I'm impressed mm -hmm. uh, because usually you would expect to see something like this um, within weeks, mm. not within days. Because right. you know, usually from a political perspective, you're saying, okay, how is this going to play out? Do I really want to get in on this fight? Mm -hmm. And I have to give uh, the Attorney General credit. He, he just said, you know what, I'm going to, this is something that we need. Mm -hmm. This is just the, the straw that broke the camel's back. Sure, absolutely. Dan, your, th your sense of this and the overall, what he's oh, well, trying I, to get you know, I think here. I think kudos to him. You, yeah. know, it's his, you know, he's the first uh, statewide elected official to take this stance. Um, you know, people got to remember, you know, and, and, you know, I like Representative Debbie Rodella. She's a great lady. But one of the things that he did was he decertified Tommy Rodella. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is long after all of this stuff happened. So, you know, he's really presenting this in a nonpartisan way. And what I, I think you got to give him credit for is I think he's doing a very good job mm -hmm. of being, you know, he, he's he's understanding that you got to address all of the issues that this is that this is causing this. It's not just a how do we throw people in jail or how do we let people out of jail. It's how do we make the police safe while the police respect the rights of the citizens. Mm -hmm. How do we make how do we look at these agencies? You know, this gentleman, this this individual that killed this police officer in Rio Rancho, where I'm from. You know, clearly this guy didn't wake up one day from his record and say I'm going to go do this. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you you can track this this guy, this individual back to the system failing him back when he was a kid. Nice. Whether it's CYFD, the foster programs, things like that that I. I think Hector, as the Attorney General, is saying, mm -hmm. you know, we have to look at all of this. We can't look at this from a vacuum. And it's in line with his legislative record when we served in Santa Fe. You know, he, mm -hmm. he carried a bill that was, uh, that was really important uh, in New Mexico that, that we supported. Few Republicans did. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of the, the start of this where he said, you know, it was not required by the police to tape interviews in New Mexico. You could say, I got, this is what Gene told me through handwritten notes. Gotcha. And Hector had a bill that said, no, we should tape this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that has now grown into the lapel cameras and right. the tape recorders on the hips. So Hector's been at the forefront of this. And I think, you know, politically, it's putting him in a really good spot. I mean, nobody can question whether Hector Balderas is a progressive Democrat. But I got to tell you, there's got to be a lot of conservative Republicans tough on crime that like what he's doing right now. Interesting. Dan, uh, Senator Feldman, Dan mentioned uh, something interesting to me. He's, Mr. Balderas has sent letters to the 12 agencies that are uh, participating this week. And part of it says, quote, the letter urges collective ownership of the systemic fa failures that almost certainly contributed to this devastating incident, talking about Mr. Benner's death. Again, that leadership, that, that ability to step forward and say, we all have to take responsibility here. Yes. My sense is the public has been waiting for someone to do that on this issue yes. for a long time. I think they have. Mm -hmm. And I think that we do have a parallel. When we had a problem with DWI uh, back in the early 2000s and the late 90s, mm -hmm. finally it turned out that a lot of this landed in the courts and the criminal justice's lap. And finally, I think it was Judge Nakamura here in Bernalillo County held a kind of a summit for all of the judges here. Mm. And then things began to change. People didn't get, you know, nine, ten DWIs uh, and still kill somebody else. Mm -hmm. I think this is really commendable on his, uh, his part. But I want to say that a task force alone won't do it. Mm -hmm. If you want a coordinated, good criminal justice system, System, fund it, fund it, fund behavioral health care, uh, which we are the 51st in the country in, in behavioral health care, fund your probation office, create a new judge when it's needed, create a, a strong um, 
a strong system, including public defenders, mm -hmm. um, and uh, reform your county jails mm -hmm. uh, rather than just uh, sending, uh, letting people languish there forever um, because, you know, and that's, that's a part of this problem mm -hmm. is the delay, mm -hmm. is the delay. That's interesting. I'm glad, I appreciate you putting that out there because Russell Contreras, it's interesting, it is organic. It's all connect, interconnected, isn't it? The yes. justice system here. And, you know, basically he's saying the, the entire system needs a scrub, needs a fresh set of eyes to look at all this. I'm curious how he's going to be heard and received. We had just talked about this with these guys. I mean, it, it, what is it going to take for people to kind of respond to that a little bit? Well, he's, it, one of the things that he's doing is his transparency. He's yeah. like, I'm going to be as transparent as possible and reach trans and that resonates with folks. So yeah. One of the things he says, let's put it out there. Mm -hmm. Let's put our, our, our zits to the things we're doing great. Because nothing, if you put it out there and you, and you say you're accountable, nothing you cannot respond to say, it's my fault. Right. We messed up. Right. And what he's doing and is saying, we all should be that. We should all be held accountable. Mm -hmm. And the Bernalillo uh, County District Attorney's Office is one stop. I mean, for all the criticism, mm -hmm. he said, well, let's put it out there. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we have messed up. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, in terms of the behavioral health, he's mentioned that, okay, yeah, we do need more resources. Right. We don't have a Kendra's law here. Right. Should we have one? Right. And this is the system where we go back to James Boyd. To, so maybe this individual here, was there a system that a systematic failure? Mm -hmm. And by putting it out there and also addressing the Academy Board, he's sitting there saying, now we all have to we all have to be held accountable and we all have a stake in this. Right. And you know, Hector's posing himself, you know, mm -hmm. the, the question earlier mm -hmm. during the session about the lack of leadership in the Democrat Party right now, you know, Hector is quickly emerging as that leader. Mm -hmm. And he's quickly emerging as that leader that has bipartisan support, has the ability to work across lines, work with Governor Martinez, work with Republicans in the legislature and you know he's at that young enough stage mm -hmm. that you know it this is this has posed a real opportunity I think Hector is seizing that moment mm -hmm. and I, I think he's gonna play well for him and mm -hmm. I think I think he's a good person for the state of sure. New Mexico. You know interestingly Tom Garrity um, we've talked about this off air a lot of us have the AG's office is really kind of sweet in a way you can never not get a headline you can always get a headline yeah <laughs> because you're the white knight of any situation but we've had a lot of AG's who haven't quite seen it that way have we? <laughs> Well, about yeah. most, how about, about most, most, all right. <laughs> but the ones who have have done tremendously exactly. well. Tommy. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Udall, right. Jeff Bingaman. You know, you, right. you have folks who have a proven track record. Right. And you know, for Hector Balderas, I think what his goal is is to not to win the trust of New Mexico residents mm -hmm. for the courts and justice system. It's mm -hmm. to win the trust of Hector Balderas. Okay. Uh, and here's the reason why: is you know, the courts and justice system, uh, lawyers, judges. Um, in our own perception surveying, um, they have been not only decreasing in the level of trust and favorability, but mm. increasing in the level of distrust and unfavorability over the last five years. So um, things have been festering, not just at the statewide level, but in all different regions of the state when it comes to the courts and justice system. Mm -hmm. So what he needs to be able to do is say, I am the, you know, I am the outsider. You know, here I am, I'm coming in to fix this system and That's stuff. Right. Right. And so he doesn't have to win trust in the system. He just has to win trust for himself. I'm gonna lift the lid on that just a little bit. Was there any, any threads of what people were having issues with in, this, in the system particularly that drove those kind of numbers? You know, not specific. We didn't uh, survey specifically to okay. items or okay. issues. But when you take a look at some of the items as far as, you know, um, you know plea deals. Yeah. Um, you know, police departments in unfavorable mm -hmm. lights. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, attorneys always being out there defending uh, different folks in the public spotlight, whether it's justified or not or anything. Right. But you have folks in the courts and justice system who are doing their own job, mm -hmm. but they're just not representing the issues or they're representing things that just aren't working. Gotcha. Didi, one of the art of being an AG is this interesting tension you have naturally with folks who are sort of your, your allies, meaning in law enforcement, but you're over, also overseeing these folks too. There's a fine line about how to push and not feel like you're against law enforcement. At, at a certain level, you know what I mean? How, how do you feel he's doing on that? Well, I, I think that, yeah, you know, really, if you look at the office of AG, mm -hmm. you have to look at it historically. And the role of the AG is not as the top cop and the top prosecutor. It is as the state's lawyer. Gotcha. Uh, making sure, overseeing the rest of government, making sure that, um, everything is done legally. Mm -hmm. And you can see him stepping into that as well with the behavioral health uh, area. He is today saying that he's hiring um, uh, private 
auditors in order to expedite that that uh, investigation, which everyone's been so frustrated with. Mm -hmm. But you know, if uh, in a, on a campaign trail, playing up the role, I remember Hal Stratton was the first one who did this. Mm -hmm. In fact, his billboards when he campaigned for AG had blood on oh, them. Oh, seriously. <laughs> uh, and playing up the role of the AG as a prosecutor. Yeah. Tom Udall, who was running against him, told me, that's not really the role of the AG, but that's the way you get elected. Yeah, interesting. Up next, we talk about bullying and other challenges that young people face when they come out as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender.